Hello, welcome back to General Chemistry 1. My name is Dan, and today we're going to be looking at trends on the periodic table. So there's a number of properties of the different elements, and the periodic table is organized in such a way that allows us to pretty easily quantify the relationships between one side of the table and the other side of the table, between metals and nonmetals, so on and so forth. We're going to start, though, by looking at what's called the Aufbau Principle. And the Aufbau Principle is just a way of kind of counting on the periodic table to see where the valence electrons of each species are going to be, whether they'll be in the s orbital, whether they'll be in the p orbital or d orbital, and then also which energy level they'll be in. So what we can do with the Aufbau Principle is we can kind of just literally count across the periodic table, and that'll get us a way of determining... Um, what orbitals we're going to find our electrons in. So for example here, on the left side we have our s orbital species, we have our d orbital species in the middle with the transition metals, and we have our p orbital species on the right side with our nonmetals. So if we take a look at the periodic table, what we can do is let's say we're starting at period one over here. So hydrogen is going to have 1s1. On the right side, we're going to have 1s2. And now, s orbital can only have two electrons, so that's a filled um, s orbital. So let me go to the next one. This one's going to be at lithium here is period 2, so we're going to have 2s1, 2s2 for lithium and beryllium. Then we get into the p orbitals. So we'd have 2 p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6. So we've gotten up to neon, we've counted everything. So what we could say neon's elect valent, what we could say neon's electronic structure is, is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2, oops, 2 P6. And that's its full one. If we wanted to look at just the valence electrons, we would go to the previous noble gas and write that from there. So the previous noble gas is helium up here. So what we can write is we can write neon is also equal to just the helium and then 2s2, 2p6. Writing this helium implies everything comes before it, like up to the structure of helium. And so everything in the highest energy level, this quantum principal quantum number of 2, is going to be our valence electrons. Over here with helium, those are what are called our core electrons. Okay, valence electrons are what we're usually going to be looking at because they're the ones that influence the properties of each atom. But let's continue counting. Okay, so over here we'd have with sodium 3s1, 3s2. Over here with aluminum we'd have 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5 and 3p6. So argon has uh, up to three, everything up to 3p6. Now for the fourth period, we have 4s1, 4s2 once again, but now we're getting into what's called the D block. So here we're going to have 3d1. Note that it's 3 because that's the first d orbital. 3, 3d is the first set of 3d orbitals. Same thing would happen for the lanthanides down here. The first one here is 4f. So we have 3d1, 3d2, 3d3, 3d4, 3d5, and so on and so forth. Down here, once we get to the lanthanides, we'd have, this is group 6, 6s1, 6s2. We'd go down here. We have 4f1, 4f2, and so on and so forth up to 14. So you see, it's just a very simple and straightforward kind of counting method going on. So let's say then we wanted to do, um, I don't know, let's look at titanium over here. So the t 
full electronic structure for titanium would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then 3d2. So that's every that's all the electrons it encompasses. But we're looking at the valence electrons. So we can also write this as the previous noble gas, which is our argon. So we're just going to write argon here. And then 4s2, 3d10. Oops, sorry, 3d2. So see, we took this entire block here of core electrons and just kind of stuffed them into this term. Because the circled part here is just the electronic structure of argon. So we're just writing argon down here as saying that these are the electrons that aren't in the valence band. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. If we wanted to look at it like in terms of filling up actual orbitals, we could do that too. So like we said, hydrogen has just one electron, like so. Helium has two. We move on to 2s after that. So these all have the same thing here. But then lithium has one and 2s. Beryllium has two and 2s. So it has two filled s orbitals. Now we move on to our P block. These are all full. And now the way we're going to start filling out the P block in terms of orbital diagrams is we're going to put one electron in each orbital first. That's based on Hund's rule. And that's just saying that having three electrons in lone as lone pairs in orbitals first is going to be more energi energetically favorable. So it's going to look like this. Beryllium has one p electron, car carbon has two, and nitrogen has three. Just like that. What would be wrong to do is if we did something like this. If we did like that for nitrogen, that's not correct. That's not following Hund's rule. So that's no good. So then we finish off that period. These all have the things in them. So then oxygen has four electrons. So we're going to fill up with Hund's rule first. Then, only then, once we're full, we're going to add that fourth electron. Same thing is going to happen for fluorine. And then finally, neon has what's called a full octet. That means that all eight of these or all um all of these electrons here, the two electrons from 2s and the six electrons from 2p, give us a full octet of eight electrons. And as we'll see in the Lewis structures chapter, an, a, a set of eight electrons is just a very stable structure. And that's one of the reasons why noble gases are so unreactive. And also why the halides like to form negative one ions, because then they have an extra electron and they have, instead of seven, they have eight valence electrons. So we can look at this in the transition metals too. Okay, so for cal for potassium we just have one 4s. For calcium we have two 4s. The rest of these have the same. So then we move into the 3D track with uh, scandium. So there's just one D there. There's two. And there's three. This has four. Now, there's a reason why this is highlighted red. What I just did is actually incorrect. One of the exceptions, there's some exceptions when doing the alpha principle when we're counting these electrons, and chromium is one of those atoms. So if you look, with the current structure of chromium, we have one d orbital unfilled. What happens is it's, it's more energetically favorable to have a completely half full set of d orbitals than not having them with a full s orbital. So what's actually going to happen...